Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers and today's episode number 118. And as usual, before I start, I want to welcome all my new subscribers and I also want to thank all you guys who've sent me some monetary donations. I really appreciate that. And also I want to thank all my viewers who nominated me in the YouTube's channels on the rise. So a big thanks goes out to all of you for that. Now you guys know that this is the wood stove I use to heat my shop right now until I get a gas heater installed in my shop. Some people are asking me questions about the wood stove and particularly do you have a blower on your stove to blow the hot air? Well the answer to that is yes. The blower is located right at the back of the stove. You can see the switch right here. I've got it off right now so that it's not as noisy but I'll turn it on. This is a variable speed fan. So right now it's the fastest. You can lower it if you want. And what this does is it blows the hot air through this crack over here. And you can actually feel the air coming out quite a bit. It heats up the shop twice as fast as without having the blower installed. And here's the model number of it. This is the more quiet blowers that's available for this stove. You can buy a different blower, it may be louder, and I'm not sure if it's variable speed or not. So as you can see, it's a wide fan. It's not that big, it's rectangular, it screws on to the stove. This blower here was actually made for this specific stove. It does fit on other models of this brand of stove. So yeah, it's really handy. Like I said, it heats up the shop twice as fast. It was 150 bucks for that blower plus tax, but it's definitely worth it. So if you want to heat up your shop fast, just put a blower on your wood stove. Also make sure that everything you do is up to local codes because your insurance may not cover you if something happens. Somebody had also mentioned about putting a magic heat on the pipe here of the stove. Well, my insurance would not cover me if I did that and the manufacturer of the stove recommends not doctoring anything on the wood stove or the pipe because it could affect the performance of the stove. So that's why I left it the way it is. In my next question today, a YouTuber asked me why does my lawnmower have a slight vibration? Well, the most common problem to this could be an unbalanced cutting blade. Make sure that the blade is sharp and make sure that it's balanced as well. If it's really damaged, then just get a new blade and that should get rid of the vibration in your lawnmower. And by the way, we've got some snow falling today. It looks nice out there. Anyways, my next question today is in regards to a 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine, specifically the horizontal motors. Now somebody's asking me if they can add a second shaft to their engine. Before I continue with the answer, I just want to show you a Tecumseh engine here and it's got two shafts. So probably this is what he wants to do is add another shaft to add another pulley. Well the answer to his question is yes you can add another shaft. What you need to do though is get a different sub cover. You need to get a camshaft for the same motor but a longer camshaft which would protrude out of the sump cover. And then you could add your pulley to it and a pulley on this one too if you want. So basically you would end up with this setup over here. So it's really important that you get the proper cover from another engine that's the same and the camshaft from an engine that's the same as well but a longer camshaft like this. It may take you a while to find these parts or you may just get fortunate and find them right away. You can look in your local classifieds for an engine or advertise that you're looking for a specific engine with two shafts and you may just get fortunate and find one. Some of my viewers from other countries who probably don't have snow there saw the video I had the other day called What I'm Working On and this snowmobile was in that video and they were wondering how do the brakes work on a snowmobile? Well the brake lever is right here you just pull it in to brake. It's a hydraulic system so there's brake fluid in this little container here which goes to a brake cylinder inside the snow machine right over here and here's the brake disc or rotor. So by the way, this is the brake caliper here. So when you press on the brakes, it squeezes the brake pads on this disc or rotor. Now the disc here is connected to the shaft that goes down to the drive that goes down to the track. By putting the brakes on, you're stopping the disc and it's stopping the track. It's pretty well the same system on a motorcycle or your car. 
Today I'm going to talk about a question that I get sometimes in regards to Jiffy ice augers with a two-stroke Tecumseh engine. Sometimes people have a Tillotson carburetor like this one here has. And sometimes people wonder why it's still not running after they've rebuilt the carburetor. Well, sometimes what happens is this plastic part over here, as you can see, is warped. And it's Tecumseh part 640255 and that part is still available. So all you have to do is replace this part, usually it's under 10 bucks and oftentimes that's your problem. I've seen them leak before, I did a leak down test on the carb one time and it was just bubbling over here so it was no wonder why the thing wasn't running properly. And to replace it all you have to do is remove the four torque screws, some will just have a slotted screw. Then you want to take out the idle screw over here and put it in on the new part and that's it. And here's that part. I'll try to put a link underneath the video today for where you can buy one online. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me, why do the augers on my snowblower keep turning all the time, even if the auger lever is not pressed down? What could be causing this problem is that the auger cable is too tight, or somebody has replaced your auger belt or belts and put in belts that are too short. On this blower here, the auger cable is right here. As you can see, it's a bit loose. If it were too tight, it would be actually engaging the auger belt in here, and your augers would always be turning, even if this lever here is up like that. So you want a bit of play like this in the lever. Actually, it should engage about here, not when it's up here. Like I mentioned, if your cable is too tight, the augers are always going to turn, and it becomes a major safety hazard. And like I mentioned about the belt, is sometimes people replace the auger belt with one that's too short and therefore your auger will always turn. The belt cannot be tight or have any pressure on it when the auger lever is up like that. So basically just check your auger cable, check your belt. If there's more issues then it could be that something is broken or not installed properly. In my next question somebody asked me how do I remove an auger pulley that's made out of plastic that doesn't want to come off the shaft. I'm just outside right now, I'm going to show you what an auger pulley is. It's the pulley right behind the auger shell as you can see right here. Now this one's made out of metal so you can remove it sometimes without breaking it. But if it is made of plastic and it does not want to come off, you're more than likely going to have to sacrifice that pulley. What I mean by that is break it in order to get it off the shaft. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me if it's okay to put a brush cutter wheel on a weed eater. Now I'm assuming he's referring to the green weed eaters, which are a bit small sometimes. My answer to his question would be that it may not be a good idea, especially if it's a green weed eater, because it may be underpowered. You may put the brush cutter wheel on it and then find out that your weed eater does not have enough power to use it properly. And if it's a really small weed eater, you may end up breaking the cable inside the shaft. So the best advice I can offer you is to make sure that the weed eater you want to put the brush cutter wheel on has enough power for what you want to do. Another question I got the other day is, what kind of motor does my Jiffy ice auger have? Well, if it looks like this, and you can see Tecumseh on it, then it's a Tecumseh engine. Some of the newer Jiffy ice augers may not have a Tecumseh engine. But if you bought yours at least five to six years ago, it probably does. And another question I often get too is, are parts available for it? Well, the answer to that is yes. You can get individual Tecumseh parts for the motor. You may not be able to get every single part that you may need because as you guys know, Tecumseh does not make small motors anymore. But for the rest of the auger, just go to where you bought the auger itself because all these parts over here excluding the motor, should still be available. Now most of the carburetors on these ice augers are not adjustable. Only if you have an older ice auger will you find two screws. One will be called the L screw and the other the H screw to adjust the carburetor with. So that'll be the end of this episode today. Thanks for taking the time today to come and watch my episode. Hopefully you learned something from today's show as well. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you in two weeks.